Hi dear students, this class we are going to continue the mathematical reasoning. Last class we discussed about conjunction, disjunction, implication and by implication. That's what we discussed as P and Q truth table, P R Q truth table, P implies Q truth table, P if and only if Q truth table we discussed and also we discussed in the last class very very important point P implies Q is logically equivalent to negation Q implies negation P and also we discussed P implies Q is logically equivalent to negation P or Q. With the help of this particular idea only, we discussed how to write the negation of P implies Q. When a statement is given, for the statement P implies Q, how to write the negation that we discussed in the last class. That means negation of P implies Q is logically equivalent to negation P or Q. So that is nothing but negation of negation P is nothing but P. When negation is entering inside R changes to and negation Q. So this is negation for P implies Q. That is the discussion we did. So negation Q implies negation P which we are calling it as contrapositive of the given statement that we discussed in the last class, right? So, this class we are going to continue about this type of information. The first one we are going to discuss about P implies Q. For this statement, what is a converse? What is the converse for this statement? For P implies Q, the converse statement is Q implies P. For the statement P implies Q, what is the inverse statement? Inverse is nothing but negation of P implies negation of Q. This is inverse of the given statement P implies Q. At the same time, for the statement P implies Q, which you already know, what is a contrapositive? Come on, tell me, what is a contrapositive statement for that? A contrapositive for that is, negation Q implies negation P. So, sometimes they will ask, the question is given, P implies Q. What is the converse for the statement? What is the inverse for the statement? What is the contrapositive of the statement? P implies Q is a statement. This is called converse of the statement. This is called inverse of the statement. Negation P implies negation Q. And this is called contrapositive of a statement. Next I am going to discuss about what is a tautology. The other important idea we are going to discuss as tautology. Tautology means the truth table consists of for all possibilities true. For all possibilities its truth value is true. Then it is said to be a tautology. So observe here P is one statement. Its possibilities are true, false. P is either true or false. Next, we are discussing about negation P. Or if P is true, negation P is false. If P is false, the negation P is true. Now, for these two, I am going to construct the table for R. Tell me what is P or negation P? Everyone, you know about R. R is false only when both are false. Both are false, then only R is false. 
so here also it is a true here also it is a true you can observe its a truth value is always true its a truth value is always true so that's why which we will call it as tautology that means p or negation p is nothing but tautology that is denoted with t so what is a tautology its truth value is always true for all possibilities that means for all possibilities its truth value is true then it is said to be a tautology this is an example for tautology its truth value is true for all possibilities right in a similar way if its truth value is false for all possibilities its truth value is false for all possibilities that is called a fallacy that is called a contradiction what we are calling contradiction the same we are also calling it as fallacy or we can say fallacy that means its truth value is false for all possibilities right you can observe here an example this is a space statement you know p is either true or false these are the possibilities next we have negation p here negation p is false and here it is true now what i am going to do is between these two i am constructing and p and negation p i am constructing the truth table i hope so everyone know truth table for and and is true only when both are true and is true only when both are true that's why here also it is a false here also it is a false now you can observe false for all possibilities so it is called a fallacy that is called a contradiction that we can represent in this way p and negation p is called it as contradiction right so that is about the contradiction and that is about tautology right so i hope so these no need to discuss again p r q is the same as q r p which we will call it as commutative law p and the q is same as q and p at the same time p r q r r is the same as p r q r that is associative law at the same time p and q and r is logically equivalent to p and q and r i am not writing here this is logically equivalent to at the same time we can write you know the distributive law p r q and r is logically equivalent to p r q and p r r this is the distributive law at the same time p and q r r distributive law is logically equivalent to p and q r p and r so this is the distributive law and is the distributive over r here r is a distributive over and this one is an associative law for r disjunction for conjunction and this is commutative law okay so another sign at the same time you people know about the circuit diagrams suppose you can say here there is a battery like this and here we have a light is there this is p and this is q when the light will blow so 
when both the switches are closed. That's why here we can represent it as P and Q. At the same time, next case you can see. In this case, when the power will supply from one junction to another junction, here we have P and here we have Q. So in this case, P R Q. Okay, this is R circuit and this is end circuit. So this is another information. They may ask you the questions in JE mains. At the same time, earlier we already discussed negation of P R Q. That's what we discussed as a De Morgan's law. Negation P and negation Q. At the same time, negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to negation P or negation Q. The same we discussed in the earlier class also. When negation is entering inside, R changes to end and changes to R. These are called as De Morgan's laws. So generally, they have asked these type of ideas in generally JE mains exam. One more important idea that we will call it as dual of a statement. What is the dual of the given statement? They have given this information P and Q given. Write the dual for this statement. So this is the dual for the statement. Suppose another one is there. P R Q and R. So this is a P and Q R R. For this statement, this is called the dual. Dual statement means what is happening? And is replaced with R. R is replaced with and we got this statement. R replaced with and symbol. And is replaced with R symbol. For this statement, this statement is called dual. D U A L. That is about the dual of a statement. Now let's have a discussion with validity of a statement. This validity information is there in the NCID textbook. Okay. So this is just for the purpose of never ask the questions in JE based on this validity of the statement. But in the NCID textbook, they have given some questions based on checking the validity of a statement. Let's have a discussion of that one. The first one is validity with end. If end is there, how to check its validity? Between two statements, end is there. How to check the validity of that statement? How to check? All of you pay attention here. P is a one statement. Show that P statement is true. Show that the statement Q is also true. What we are doing? One statement is P. The other statement is Q. Then only we are calling it as P and Q. Yes or no? We are calling P and Q. So that's why one statement is P. The other statement is Q. Between these two, there is a connecting word and. When can we say that this statement is valid? To say that statement is valid, what we have to do is show that the statement P is true. Show that the statement Q also true. P is true, Q is true. Then we can say P and Q is true. Just you can take an example. So P is equals to 60 is a multiple of 5. Q is another statement. 60 is a multiple of 12. 
12 right so can you tell me what is the compound statement the compound statement p and q is 60 is a multiple of multiple of 5 and 12 so this is the compound statement this is the compound statement for these two simple statements now we have to check whether this is a valid statement or not to check this is a valid statement or not what we have to show show that this statement is true show that this statement is true if both are true then we can say this is a valid statement now what to do we know that 60 is a multiple of 5 at the same time we know that 60 is a multiple of 12 therefore 60 is a multiple of 4 4 is 5 is true 60 is a multiple of 12 also true therefore we can say this statement is a valid statement right that is about the validity of a statement involving and next one we are going to check the validity of a statement involving with or how to check the validity of the statement with or so for that what we all do first of all p is false and then show that q is true assume that p is false show that q is true this one assumption and this one is we have to prove what we are doing assume that the statement p is false show that the statement q is true or assume that the statement p is true and show that the statement q is false so any method we can approach so let us say the example here square of an integer square of an integer is positive or negative what i am saying square of an integer is positive or negative so those are the two statements connected by the connecting word R. Square of an integer is positive or negative. So that's why what I am doing here. First statement B is equal to X square is positive. Second one is X square is negative. These two statements are connected by the connecting word R to form a compound statement. So X square is positive one statement. X square is negative another statement. Now what I am saying assume that assumption P is false. We are assuming P is false. P is false means what? X square greater than or equals to 0 is false. That means X square is not greater than or equal to 0. That means X square is less than 0. Yes or no? x square less than 0 means x square is negative or not that is our statement x square is negative once again observe here to check the validity of the statement with r what we are doing assume that the statement p is false and show that the statement q is true that's why I assumed this statement is false. 
x square greater than or equal to 0 is false. Then x square not greater than or equal to 0. x square is not greater than or equal to 0 means what? x square must be less than 0. That is our statement to Q. That means we got Q is true. P is false. We shown Q is true. That is the way we have to approach. Assume that P is false. Prove that Q is true. Then we can say the given statement is a valid statement. That is the way of checking the validity of the statement with R. Next one, another important one. Validity of the statement with if then. If then is there. That is nothing but implication. When implication is there, how to check the validity of the statement? For here, we have three different methods are there. The first one is, we are calling it as direct method. The first method is direct method. What we are doing in direct method? In direct method, this is the meaning, yes or no? If P, then Q. That only we will write it as P implies Q. So this is the statement. How to check the validity of the statement in different methods? How to check the validity of this statement in different methods? That's what I am going to discuss. First one is direct method. In direct method what to do? Assume that Assume that P is true and prove that Q is also true. What we are saying? Assume that P is true and show that Q is also true. Okay? We are assuming P is true and Q is also true. We have to prove. So that is what we are going to follow in direct method. Once again, assume P is true. Prove that. We have to prove that Q is also true. Then we can say the statement is a valid statement. Next, the second method we are going to do is that is contrapositive method. What we are doing in contrapositive method? I hope so everyone know what is a contrapositive. Contrapositive means negation Q implies negation P. This is negation Q implies negation P. This is a contrapositive of a statement. That's why what we are going to do here? Assume that Q is false. Assume that Q is false. Show that P is also false. That is the contrapositive method. In contrapositive method what we are doing? We are assuming that Q is false and we have to show that P is false. Okay, so that is about the contrapositive method. And the last one is a contradiction method. Last one is contradiction method. What is a contradiction method? In contradiction method, what we are going to do is assume that P is true, Q is false. The idea behind this particular one is P implies Q. P implies Q when it is false. P implies Q is false only when first one is true, second one is false. Then only P implies Q is false. So that's why contradiction method what we are going to do is assume that P is true and Q is false. 
एज्यूम दैट पी इज ट्रू एंड क्यू इज फॉल्स ऑप्टेन ए कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन एज्यूम दैट पी इज ट्रू क्यू इज फॉल्स एंड ऑप्टेन ए कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन देन we can say the given statement is a valid statements those are the three methods we are going to discuss validity of the statement with if then just i am going to give an example in all these cases all of you pay attention here if x belongs to r x belongs to r x cube plus 4x is equals to 0 then x is equals to 0 x is a real number such that x cube plus 4x is equal to 0 then the value of x must be equal to 0 that is the statement so it is the combination of two statements the first statement is x cube plus 4x is equals to 0 and the second statement is x is equals to 0 what we are doing in direct method in direct method we are assuming p is true and then we are showing q is also true that means a is true that is the starting we are doing are x cube plus 4x is equal to 0 we are assuming then we have to show this is also true x is equal to 0 also true for real numbers we have to show but now x cube plus 4x is equal to 0 is true that is the assumption now from this i can write x into x square plus 4 is equal to 0 but this product is equal to 0 means this never be 0 for any real numbers x square plus 4 you never get 0 that's why the only possibility is x must be equal to 0 x is equal to 0 we got so we are assuming this is true and then we got q we are assuming this one is true and then we got x value is equal to 0 that means q a is true we got so that is the direct method direct method what we are doing we are assuming p is true then we have to get q that means we have to get q means we are getting q means q is true we are getting x is equal to 0 is true we are getting right so that is about the direct method next one we are going to discuss about contra positive method contra positive method what we are doing negation q implies negation p negation q means what first one is p is equal to x cube plus 4x is equals to 0 q is equals to x is equals to 0 now we are saying negation q that means x is equal to 0 is false x is equal to 0 is false or x is equal to 0 is false means what x not equal to 0 whenever x not equal to 0 what i can write x into x square plus 4 not equal to 0 because when this is not equal to 0 no doubt this is also not equal to 0 as on both sides we are multiplying with x square plus 4 now we can write x cube plus 4x is not equal to 0 ra x is equal to 0 is false we got x cube plus 4x is equal to 0 is also false Are x cube plus 4x not equal to 0 means what? X cube plus 4x is equal to 0 is false. So that's what we got. Negation Q. That means Q is false. We got P. R P is also false. That's what P Q is false. Show that P is also false. That is the contra positive method we are assuming this is false 
then we got this is also false this is also false means x cube plus 4x is not equal to 0 that's what we got so that is about the contrapositive method contrapositive method over direct method also over finally we are going to discuss about contradiction method what is a contradiction method p is true q is false and obtain a contradiction p is true q is false and obtain a contradiction that is the contra positive method sorry contradiction method observe here what i am doing x cube plus 4x is equals to 0 is true and x is equal to 0 is false this is true this is false we are assuming and try to obtain a contradiction x cube plus 4x is equal to 0 means what we can write x into x square plus 4 is equal to 0 that means x must be equal to 0 here x is equal to 0 is false means x value is not equal to 0 finally what we got here we got x value is equal to 0 and here we got x value not equal to 0 which is a contradiction which is a contradiction right so that is about a checking whether the given statement is a valid statement or not with the help of contradiction method okay we will discuss the direct method assume p is true show that q is also true that is direct method next we use the contra positive method in contra positive method what we did q is false show that p is also false next the third one is contradiction method in contradiction method what we are doing assume that p is a true q is a false p is a true q is a false and obtain a contradiction then we can say the given statement is a valid statement so those are the three methods for checking the validity with if p then q right so last idea is by giving a counter examples x square minus 1 is equal to 0 has no real root between 0 and 2 so that is one example x square minus 1 is equal to 0 has no real root between 0 and 2 so we have to check with by giving a counter example so tell me one example which counter that one which countering that one tell me one example yes i am giving an example x is equals to 1 is a root for this equation at the same time this 1 is there between 0 and 2 but what is saying x square minus 1 is equal to 0 has no root between 0 and 2 but we have x is equal to 1 is a root for this equation that 1 lies between 0 and 2 so that is another one how to check the validity of the statement by giving a counter examples so these are the ideas involved in mathematical reasoning the entire ideas whatever i discussed at the end validity of the statement never asked in je exam the question but it is there for subjective purpose validity of the statement all other ideas earlier i discussed they are very very important ideas for objective exam in je mains every year in je mains they are asking one question based on this particular information mathematical reasoning okay bye